Let's talk about fasting and exercise. This is a really interesting new study that found that seven days of fasting preserves muscle strength, but leads to a compromised aspect when it comes to athletic performance, specifically high intensity exercise. This is a really interesting study that was published in Nature Communications titled, Effects of Seven Days Fasting on Physical Performance and Metabolic Adaptation During Exercise in humans. They say humans have, throughout history, faced periods of starvation, necessitating increased physical effort to gather food. To explore adaptations in muscle function, 13 participants, 7 males and 6 females, fasted for 7 days. They lost 4.6 kilograms, that's crazy, about 8 pounds of lean mass and 1.4 kilograms of fat mass. So, you would think that they would have lost more fat in that seven day period, but it'd be really interesting to know what percentage of that lean mass was from muscle or from water weight and so forth. But they say maximal isometric and isokinetic strength remained unchanged while peak oxygen uptake decreased by 13%. Muscle glycogen was halved while expression of electron transport chain proteins was unchanged as well. So the aim of this present study was to address several unexplored aspects of prolonged fasting and its effect on muscle performance and skeletal muscle adaptations. We reported preservation of muscle strength in leg muscle despite a significant loss of lean mass. Remember, it's almost eight pounds of lean mass. So I just want to pause right here and just, first of all, say thank you for being here. I want to talk about why that's probably not good, you know, to lose that much lean mass and why I stopped fasting. But uh, if you're enjoying the content, hit that like button and let me know what you think about fasting and exercise in the comment section below. But I just want to remind you, since we're talking about exercise, you know, exercise is really important for so many aspects of health, particularly improving muscle strength, promoting longevity, and also making fasting more effective. When you're exercising, one tool that can help you is creatine. You know that creatine actually helps supply energy to your working skeletal muscles so you get more return on your investment when it comes to exercise. Creatine has been used by numerous athletes. It's the most widely studied and safe ergogenic aids out there. But what's unique about creatine is you actually need electrolytes to get it absorbed into your muscle tissue. So that's why at Myoscience, we have paired creatine as a Creapure creatine that is the only creatine in the world not made in China. Most creatine on the internet, sadly, is made in China. This is made in Germany, really clean, tastes good, paired with electrolytes, including uh, real sea salt, as well as magnesium, taurine, potassium, and beyond. This is a phenomenal product. Close to 1,800 reviews over at myoscience.com. You can use the code podcast to save on the creatine-enhanced electrolytes, and you can use them during or before your exercise sessions as well as sauna sessions to get the most mileage. So getting back to the exercise thing, I think it's really important. There was a study... I talked about this with Thomas DeLauer recently. Um, I'll put a link to that video. Uh, finding that when comparing uh, the amount of autophagy and different metabolic characteristics linked with fasting, uh, stratifying that for VO2 max, meaning people who have a good aerobic capacity and the, they have a high exercise capacity, they are regular exercisers, when they fast in just 18 hours, their levels of autophagy and autophagy initiation proteins and various biomarkers linked with fasting were significantly higher compared to people who had a low VO2 max because they don't exercise. Uh, at, at 18 hours and all throughout the fasting window. So if you want to get the most mileage from your fast, you should exercise on the regular. You should exercise. It turns out that exercise is a way to mimic the effect of fasting and also make fasting more effective. So that's one thing to really consider. I think you should uh, always exercise for a new, numerous different conditions. But if you're really into fasting, just know that when you walk and when you hike and when you, uh, you know, go on the concept two or the ski erg or you ride your bike or go to the gym, um, you're also enhancing your ability to burn more fat and promote cellular longevity uh, when you fast. So that's really important. So getting back to the study, the investigators say further, there was a marked decline in peak oxygen consumption after six days of fasting. This was interesting. So uh, fasting compromises VO2 max. And so if you're going to perform at a high level, you're going to do a, an ultra, you're going to run a lot, you're going to do cross-country skiing, hiking, biking, things like that. Prolonged fasting is not really going to be your friend. And the investigators say, we identified a 13-fold increase in the PDK, which is pyruvate dehydrogenase kinase 4 expression, and increased PDH. And so this gets into the weeds of how both fats and carbohydrates are broken down to form energy in the mitochondria. And so it, 
It turns out that, you know, when you start to fast more, your body will rely more upon fats for fuel and less on carbohydrates. So that's been long known. Uh, but this study found that there were significant changes within the enzymes in the mitochondria. So I think that's pretty interesting. But they looked at strength, and this was really fascinating. Despite losing about eight pounds, remember it was like four point something kilograms, the humans maintain their capacity for strength. Although the high intensity endurance capacity, they say more specifically, there was a 10 to 15% decrement there. Um, despite the fact that the mitochondrial enzymes were unchanged. And this probably has to do with glycogen, uh, you know, because when you're fasting, there is going to be a significant decrease in glycogen. And here's the VO2 max uh, data here and the uh, lean mass and tissue percentage and things like that. But you can see there was a lot of uh, muscle loss from uh, legs and the arms and the whole body, as well as just total muscle mass. So I think that's interesting. There was just a marginal amount of bone mass loss, but um, you can see blood glucose goes down here, uh, uh, part B in this figure, and significant changes in body weight. In some individuals, they lost, um, you know, almost 16 pounds, which is which is crazy. So yeah, what what is coming from fat versus water from muscle? I'm not really sure, but it, it is uh, fascinating to consider all this. And, and they looked at DEXAs as well. So what I think is interesting, if we look at this figure here, you see glycogen, and then you also see markers of mitochondrial metabolism and, and so on. So as we would expect, uh, muscle glycogen goes down dramatically. And so that's probably why strength, like short-term strength, you need to pick something up, you need to deadlift. I remember in Tim Ferriss's book, Tools of the Titans, he shares a story, or he has all these different interviews in that book. One of them was, was with Dom Diagostino, and he talks about how he had a PR on his deadlift after fasting for like five days. And I thought, that's crazy. How is that even possible? Um, and it turns out that short-term, you know, explosive strength may not go down that significantly, but as I mentioned, the high intensity exercise aspect of it uh, decreased quite significantly. And that's probably because you need glycogen. You know, if you're doing a prolonged interval on the skier concept to you're sprinting, you're running an 800 meter, you know, dash or something, that depends on glycogen. So if you don't have any glycogen, you know, that's going to be compromised. So I don't know, what are, what are, what do you think about long duration fasting? I, I think for people who are uh, really overweight or obese, you know, that's probably a, a decent thing to do periodically once a quarter. But I think most people, when it comes to weight loss, slow and steady wins the race. So being more consistent with exercise, with, you know, not consuming ultra processed foods, uh, eating more of a low glycemic index, whole food, omnivorous style diet is going to be the way to go. So that's, those are my thoughts. I would love to know what you think in the comment section below. Um, but it is nice to know that if you do fast, you know, you can go hit the gym and do, you know, more strength training and you're probably going to be okay. But if you try to go to a CrossFit class or do like a, an ultra, you know, marathon, uh, that's going to be really challenging. So let me know what you think in the comments below, my friends. I very much appreciate you tuning all the way through. We'll catch you on a future one down the road.